Hello and welcome to this video on continuing sequences. Now a sequence is just an ordered list of, well usually numbers, but it could be other things as well, it could be an ordered list of letters, and usually, but not necessarily, there's some kind of pattern in those numbers or letters. So I could have a sequence, for example, A, E, I, O, and then I might ask what's the next thing in the sequence, and you might recognise, well, these are the vowels, so the next thing in the sequence would be U. So that is just a sequence, and there's some pattern in that sequence. But we're going to be looking at mathematical sequences where there's some numerical order to the numbers. So a simple one would be, for example, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and you might recognise as the sequence of even numbers. So these are the positive even numbers, and you can see that that sequence would go on forever because we've got infinitely many even numbers. We could do the same with odd numbers, for example. And sometimes in questions, they give you the first few terms of a sequence, and they want you to continue that sequence by spotting the pattern. So let's do some of these questions here. We've got three, five, seven, nine, now, what is the pattern here? Now, if we look at the relationship between these terms, you can see here that we're adding to, and here we're adding to. You can see that to get the next term of the sequence, we're just adding to to the previous term of the sequence. So to get the next two terms in the sequence, I would just add to again, and that gets me to 11, and I would add to again, and that would get me to 13. And that could go on forever, but we only want the next two terms in the sequence. What about the second one? We've got 10, we've got 7, 4, 1. Now, what's the pattern in the sequence this time? Well, if we look at 10 and 7, you can see that we're subtracting 3. So we're subtracting 3 there. And to get from 7 to 4, we're subtracting 3. And to get from 4 to 1, we're subtracting 3. Uh, so if we subtract 3 again, well, what's 1 take away 3? Well, that's minus 2. And then if we subtract 3 again, minus 2. If we subtract 3, then we get minus 5. What about the third one? We've got 48, 24, 12, 6. Now, we might initially think, well, what are we subtracting here? We're subtracting 24, but to get from the 24 to 12, we're subtracting 12, and then we're subtracting 6. So it doesn't seem that we're subtracting the same number each time. So there might be a different relationship between these numbers that doesn't involve subtraction. Well, how else could you get from one number to another? Well, it might be that we divide by something. So what do you divide 48 by to get to 24? Well, we could divide by 2. We're halving it. So if I divide by 2, then to get from 24 to 12, we're halving it. Then to get from 12 to 6, we're halving it. So we found a pattern that is consistent with all of these numbers. And then if we halve it again, 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. And then 3 divided by 2 gives us well, 1.5. If you're trying to halve an odd number, the best way to do it is to subtract 1 from it, so you get 2, then halve 2, which gives you 1, and then you just put a 0.5 on the end. So, for example, if I wanted to halve 11, I subtract 1, which gives you 10, halve that is 5, and then you put a 0.5 on the end, so it would be 5.5. Just a little handy mental tip there. Right, 4. Got 3, 6, 12... 24. Now again, we might think, well, are we adding something? Well, we're adding 3 here, but then we're adding 6, and then we're adding 12. So the number that you're adding each time is changing. Maybe there's another relationship. Maybe we're multiplying by something. So we've got 3. Well, if we times it by 2, we get 6. Now, is that consistent with the other numbers? Yes. Well, if I can times by 2, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. And then if we double again we get 48, and then if we double again, we get 96. What about the next one? Got five, we've got one, four, nine, 16, 25. Now, you might spot these as a special sequence of numbers, which is the square numbers. And the square numbers are when we've got one squared, so one squared means one times one, one times one is one, 4 is 2 times 2, i.e. 2 squared. 9 is 3 times 3, i.e. 3 squared. That's 4 squared, that's 5 squared, and therefore that would be 6 squared, and the next one would be 7 squared. But if you didn't spot that, you might look at the difference. So we can see here that we're adding 3, 
and then here we're adding 5, and then here we're adding 7, and then here we're adding 9. So this time the difference is not the same, but there is a pattern in the difference. You can see that the difference is increasing by 2 each time. So if we do that again, 9 increases by 2, the difference, then we're adding 11 this time, and 25 plus 11 is 36. And then again, the difference is going to go up by 2, and then 36 plus 13 is 49. And then we've got this last sequence here. We've got 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5... Now we could look at the difference, so you can see the difference here is plus 1, the difference here is plus 0, the difference here is plus 1, the difference here is plus 1, the difference here is plus 2. Now it's quite hard to spot, but this part of the sequence onwards matches this, so we could use that. However, there's a different type of rule with this sequence, which is a bit harder to spot. But can you see that if I did the 0 plus 1, that gives you 1. And if I did 1 plus 1, that gives you 2. If I did 1 plus 2, that gives you 3. If I did 2 plus 3, that gives us 5. So next would be 3 plus 5, which is 8, and then 5 plus 8, which is 13. So each term is not just based on the previous term, it's actually based on the previous two terms. We're adding the previous two terms to get the next one. And this actually has a special name to sequence. It's known as the Fibonacci sequence, the Fibonacci sequence. And that's a sequence which starts with 0 and 1, and then each next term is the sum of the previous two. Right, some test your understanding questions for you to do. So we've got this first sequence, we've got 13, 9, 5, and I want you to tell me the next two terms in that sequence. We've got the second test your understanding question, We've got minus 1, 2, 6, 11, and I want you to continue that. And then finally, the third one, we've got 2, 6, 8, 54, and I want you to work out the next two. You may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at these. Right, hopefully you've had a chance. Well, let's look at this. Well, that we're subtracting 4 to get from the first to second term, and indeed again we're subtracting 4, so we continue that, we subtract 4 from here, we get 1, and then if we subtract 4 again, we get minus 3, so those were the next two terms in the sequence. What about this one? Well, we're adding 3, here we're adding 4, here we're adding 5, so the difference is going up by 1 each time. So if we now add 6, we get to 17, and then if we add 7, we get to 24. So it was 17 and 24. And then finally, this one, you're not actually adding the same amount each time, you're timesing by the same number. So if we times this by 3, then you're timesing this by 3, and then you're timesing this by 3, and then if we do the same again, 54 multiplied by 3 gives you 162. And then 162 multiplied by 3 is 486. So well done if you got those right.